Kerbal Space Program, easily one of my most played games, has truly stood the test of time. I've got well over 500 hours logged on Steam and still keep returning to have more fun. Despite having several different game modes, the one that stands out the most to me is Sandbox Mode. It accommodates so many different playstyles that it's hard not to choose. That being said, I continued this choice four years ago when this was originally live streamed, moved another three years earlier, and that's when I created the save game. Starting off in the vehicle assembly building, I began constructing a craft to achieve my relatively simple goal of landing on Eve, that purple pain in my ass. Oftentimes, when I set out to make something simple, I end up making something extremely convoluted that ends up eating way more of my time than if I had just stuck to the original plan of building a fucking Eve lander. But no! You just had to suggest that I build a chair with humongous fucking boosters! So, I switched over to the space plane hangar and started working on a chair. A chair. First things first, I obviously selected the Mark II cockpit, an easy choice to make with its aerodynamic, aerodynamic technology. technology. Following it closely with the just as easy to select Mark II rocket fuselage, including oxidizer, for all of your oxidation needs. Then, not caring much for the balance of the craft, I constructed the seat from, you guessed it, Mark II rocket fuselage, and the front unileg, as I like to call it, from some other, more different Mark II rocket fuselage, along with some Mark II drone cores to even out the chair. Confidently, I continued moving forward towards the future we all not only needed, but deserved, deciding that it's fine that I've never even made it to EVE with a normal spacecraft, deciding that it too was fine that I've never built a normal space shuttle. Always remember, it's never too early to be a success. Adding boosters and somewhat of a penis, I decided it was time for a test launch. So I moved over to the launch pad and began preparing for its first launch. Would it be a success or would it be a massive failure and kill everyone? No one could know the answer, so I hit launch and found out. It was majestic. I had never seen such beauty before. Continuing the flight, I knew I had to make this into a reality. Its perfection struck me. Such a simple design was so effective and useful for family outings that anyone could enjoy it. That was until its aerodynamic specialties kicked in. At high speeds, the chair has some odd tendencies to putting this lightly knockabout. But, not to fear, these tendencies don't matter when one realizes the pristine safety of the chair. Despite impacting the ground at over 150 meters per second, not a single Kerbal was killed. Realizing the obvious holiness of the chair, I decided to further design around those principles, adding angel wings and a halo. Wait, no, not that. A halo, nothing more. Modifying the design slightly, we had a much more wieldy craft for less experienced pilots. Moving further into the build process, my spirit was broken. Such glory was simply too much for me to handle. So I decided to lessen my goals and shoot for the moon instead. It was a much simpler task, although it would still be quite challenging. Finally, after adding what felt like a million boosters, I attempted yet another launch. Beginning another successful flight, the chair shot for the sky, only to fall short and quickly have its libido get in the way. The chair swayed its pride up and down, side to side, throughout the sky, with no mercy, all the while terrifying its occupants. Finally, the booster sage had to be cut, and the crew would have to brace for a sea landing. At the mercy of the physics engine, the crew plunged towards the sea, surviving the impact only thanks to the ingenious design of the chair. After that fiasco, I decided the craft would need a slight modification. And having modified the craft, I prepared for another launch, hoping this time would be a success. However, quite a few mishaps occurred. Finally achieving orbit, I attempted to achieve a transport to the moon. Unfortunately, I simply didn't have enough Delta V to pull such a maneuver off, so I built a refueler. 
As I didn't care much for the efficiency of the craft, I went the lazy route of just strapping a lot of boosters to it, and that seemed to work with minimal mishaps. With my refueler prepped, I launched the misshapen craft and prepared for a rendezvous with the chair. Approaching the chair, I ran out of monopropellant and had to resort to legitimate methods to obtain more. With David Bowie's Starman blaring in the background, I finally moved in for the final approach. A beautiful sight to behold. After spending nearly an hour attempting to dock, I gave up and decided to end the stream. Not fear, I would return two days later to attempt yet another harrowing mission with a completely redesigned launch vehicle and a new goal of landing on Minmus. Even though it's never too early to be a success, it's also never too late to be a success. Something that I'm still telling myself seven years into making this YouTube channel. After making it into an orbit around Minmus, I prepared to land the revitalized craft. The landing was a simple task, especially since I had completely abandoned the shuttle design in favor of a more traditional lander. Something much more befitting of a fucking chair. Having finally landed, I didn't quite know what to make of this experience. Was it a waste of time, a fun challenge, or something in between? As Winnie the Pooh once said, Coddleston, Coddleston, Coddleston Pie. 